No, it's not. But I'm going to still try and explore the areas of confusion, those gray areas, because the higher resolution a picture you create, the more realistic this yeah. seems and the more tangible it becomes. Sure. Now, it does still feel a bit utopian. Take something where religion gets involved and there are absolutistic ideas of right and wrong, abortion. So you walked through your, your, your stepwise process. Is it aggressing? Is it moral? Are you a jerk? Abortion. What do we do with abortion? You mentioned reasonable people can disagree. We make it local, but something like that might be seen absolutistically as the initiation of force. How do you deal with something like abortion? Yeah, abortion, in my opinion, is maybe the hardest question. But again, I think if we stay very faithful to the principles involved here, I think we can manage to wade our way uh, even through the abortion question. So what is it people are actually disagreeing about here? Well, what they're disagreeing about in the question of abortion is whether from the moment of conception, that unborn, whether you would call it a fetus or baby or whatever, that entity, uh, if that entity is entitled to the same exact protections uh, from the legal principle that everybody else is. That's the, really the question. And, you know, reasonable minds disagree on this point. I certainly wouldn't want to call either side unreasonable. Uh, there are arguments that from the moment of conception, this is a human being and entitled to the same dignity and protections. There are also arguments that, no, this you're dealing with two cells. There's no nervous system. They can't feel pain. You don't have a sentient being here. Therefore, at least at that point, not entitled to the same legal protections. Okay, I don't know the answer. We don't know the answer here. But this is a place where reasonable minds disagree. And therefore, in all cases where reasonable minds disagree in terms of how to apply the legal principle, we let the local community decide. So think about what just happened in the law. And remember, there are three different discussions here. There's, hey, Mark, what is your personal opinion on the abortion question? I haven't even mentioned that yet. That's one discussion. Another discussion is, hey, Mark, the question you asked, how does the live and let live philosophy apply to the abortion question, and I'll continue answering that. And then there's yet a third question, which is, hey, Mark, what are the what is the constitutional analysis about abortion and what the Supreme Court just did in the abortion case they decided? That's a different question, and all three can be talked about. But to finish the question on uh, how does live and let live apply, the Supreme Court just decided to throw that question to the states. Live and let live would throw that question to even a smaller community, right? So imagine right now, if you live in a state that doesn't allow abortion and you want an abortion, you could get it. You got to travel to a state that allows it. Think of how much better this would be if the town you lived in didn't allow an abortion, but the next town did and you wanted an abortion, that would be much easier. Why is that a better rule? Well, it's a better rule because now it's easier for people to put economic pressures on places where they don't like the rule, to move if they don't like it, to boycott, whatever. But there is more, there's more we can say with the live and let live analysis here. So take uh, the same situation in the case of rape. Well, in the case of a rape, let's steal man the side that says, from the moment of conception, you have an entity that is entitled to exactly the same protection as everybody else. Let's, let's imagine we have a fully um, dignified human being from the moment of conception. Well, in the case of rape, what you have is somebody who's, a let's say, a full human is now involuntarily disconnected to another human who is now helping the first human survive. Well, you don't have a legal obligation to help other people. You might have a moral, and we argue you do have a moral obligation. So I would say to the mother uh, who's been raped and is now pregnant, look, it might be a very good moral thing for you. That baby is innocent. That person is innocent to help that person at least get to a point where they can live on their own. But you don't have to. As a legal matter, you are not required to. So if a local community made a law that said no abortion in the case of rape, the live and let live philosophy would say, sorry, you can't do that because now you are allowing that person who was involuntarily connected to the female to aggress against the mother. The second case I would cite would be a risk to the mother's health. Even if that unborn baby is a full person, 
No person gets to create a substantial risk to another person in ordinary self-defense rules apply here. So the pregnant mom uh, would be allowed to say, I'm not going to risk my health. I'm going to have an abortion or whatever the least uh, restrictive thing she could do to protect herself. She should be allowed to do that. So if a local community said um, no abortions in the case of when the mother's, uh, the expectant mother's uh, health is at risk, we would say, sorry, that violates the live and let live legal principle because it allows the baby to aggress against the mother. So that should be allowed. Now, I'll also point out our good friend, Walter Block, has made the argument. He it says, let's stop using the word abortion and instead use the word eviction. I think he's on to something here. Imagine post viability. Let's imagine late term, right? Let's, let's deal with the question of late term abortion. A pregnant woman in the eight and a half month range says, you know what? I've changed my mind. I don't want to have this baby. I want an abortion. Well, um, under the best of circumstances, her rights are to disconnect that baby. Once the baby is removed, she has no right to insist that the baby be killed. So she has every right to disconnect, but no right to kill. Therefore, you might think of this not as an abortion, but instead as an eviction. This, of course, makes it very easy for anything post viability, right? We take the baby out, we keep the baby alive. It's a win, win, win. It's a win for the woman who doesn't want to be pregnant. She's no longer pregnant. It's a win for the baby who presumably didn't want to be killed. And it's a win for potentially adoptive parents who get presumably a healthy baby to adopt. And as <clears throat> it's important to note, that as viability becomes earlier and earlier and earlier, once viability hits the moment of conception, under this theory of eviction, the entire problem of abortion goes away because the woman who doesn't want to be pregnant now simply disconnects, the baby is kept alive and given for adoption to presumably loving parents. So that would be how uh, the live and let live analysis would play out. And how would that be different? Well, local communities, other than the cases of rape or health of the mom, could ban abortions up until the point of viability, in which case the mom could remove and not kill the baby. And also this would be local community driven. So um, people who wanted abortions could simply go to the next town and get their abortion. And people who didn't want abortions would have to convince people in the next town uh, that uh, abortion is a bad thing to do and try to get them to change their rule. And we would all get at least a reasonable construction of the live and let live legal principle on the question of abortion everywhere. Thank you for joining this episode of The CEO Show. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss upcoming episodes where I will do my level best to help you unlock greater success and freedom and share this video. You and everything you do makes a difference.